Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome into another edition of the Pro Football Chase Podcast. It's Isaac Signs with you, and today we have a mock draft special. As we are one week away from the 2020 NFL Draft, we have two guests joining the show today. Retired NFL vet Arthur Motes and NFL defensive tackle Jarrell Worthy on the line to go through a first-round mock draft where I will kick things off, Arthur will follow, and Jarrell will go at three. We will just continue the same trend all the way down until we get to pick 32. But before we get into that, let's check in on Arthur Motes. Arthur, how you doing, my brother? Man, I've been doing well. You know, just enjoying this uh, family time, this mandatory staying at the house time, man. But other than that, man, life is good. Good. And how about yourself, Jarrell? But I'm doing pretty well, man. Just excited um, about the future uh, moving forward and uh, continuously uh, gaining uh, new knowledge uh, being in this quarantine, man. So I'm excited about that. (laughs) That's for sure. I think we're all learning certain techniques. I know I've been picking up cooking a little bit, trying to specialize on the grill and all that stuff, but it's been good. So what we're going to do right now, we're going to kick off this mock draft. I will start things off with the Cincinnati Bengals at number one now of course this is the most well-known pick unless something crazy happens leading up to draft night the cincinnati Bengals will select lsu quarterback joe burrow joe burrow 6'3 221 pounds his stats do not lie 5671 yards 60 touchdowns six interceptions he did it on all stages of the college football platform and we saw him pick apart defenses week in and week out zach taylor is gonna love having joe burrow in cincinnati as he now gets to handpick his own signal caller and move forward into 2020 joe burrow he is a cincinnati Bengal, and it will be come official next Thursday night so that is my pick for number one now Arthur you're at two with the Redskins I like it man so for me man this is a no-brainer the Redskins are taking Chase Young man uh edge rusher out of Ohio State this cat can flat out ball you saw what he did throughout the season the numbers that he put up if you want to put a knock on him it could be that he kind of fell off a little bit those last three to four games but you also have to remember that he had some off the field days that he was dealing with as well man but I think this guy is a staple on any defense, and this Redskins team is definitely not going to mess that up. Detroit Lions here, and um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take Jeff Okuda. I think uh, mm. I think with the pick there and what they did with Darius Slay shipping him out to Philadelphia, I think it's just it, it's it's prevalent that these guys have an opportunity to rebuild um, their secondary. They only have a couple guys on the roster with experience from last year. And, and so bringing in Jeff Okuda, a, a long, uh, lean uh, type of uh, corner who can uh, press man, uh, run, you know, and play zone, as, <clears throat> excuse me, and play zone as well. I think that he would be a great addition to the Detroit Lions and, 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 and uh, bringing home, uh, solidifying a defense that has, uh, has definitely struggled in the secondary. Um, but they have a, a few holes to fill, and I think with cornerback, they have to start with uh, Jeff Okuda. You mentioned it, Darius Slay now in Philadelphia. Okuda makes a lot of sense. If the Lions do indeed stay put at three, there's rumors that they're looking to trade back. But now number four with the New York Giants, which is where I think the draft really starts, right? And so the Giants, we know they need an offensive tackle. Isaiah Simmons is awfully intriguing to me, but I understand Dave Gettleman loves his hog mollies. He likes investing (laughs) in the offense and defensive lines. And so here's a surprise pick. I think the Giants take Louisville left tackle Mikai Becton, the 6'7", 364 pound left tackle out of Louisville. He will go to New York to protect Daniel Jones on the left side of that line and I can look for Nate Solder to swap to right tackle as that has been discussed internally with the Giants front office but Becton he mauls his opponents on film and I just think his upside and his versatility to play really any position on the perimeter for the Giants is going to be too much to pass up for Dave Gettleman. I like it man now I will say that was a little bit of a surprise for me right there man. (laughs) <laughs> yeah i know yeah, i think yeah he's he's pretty uh he's a little bit lower as far as um on my draft board you yeah. know but, you know to take him at number four that's a big jump but you know david gettleman's always been a guy that's always been willing to take chances on guys and and not necessarily uh, you know have an issue with what the media has to say about him and 
you know, i.e. Daniel Jones and what he was able to do last year would be great for them moving forward. So if they can find the protection and, and the guy that they uh, that they can trust in for, you know, 10, 12 years, then they'll, they'll have their guy. Yeah, absolutely, man. And like you said, when you spend your past two draft picks on your franchise quarterback and franchise running back, you got to protect those guys up front. So I can definitely understand that pick. All right, so for the Miami Dolphins, man, we're first looking at them. We know quarterback is a need down there, even though they got my boy Ryan Fitzpatrick. So for me, man, it came down to Tua Tagovailoa and Justin Herbert, man. So for me, I'm going with Tua. I think this is a guy that they loved a year ago. They were talking about tanking for Tua. That became the new slogan. Obviously, he got hurt this year, so it didn't play out the way that they truly wanted it to. But I think, man, this is an opportunity they're not going to let slip away. So I have the Miami Dolphins taking Tua Tagovailoa. At the fifth overall pick. Oh man, I mean that's that's a really good uh, pick at the moment. I mean, just considering, you know, what the Miami Dolphins have, uh, you know, uh, moving forward, they're trying to revamp, they're trying to bring in, you know, the right free agents in order to uh, add some lively looks to this team. But at, obviously, the quarterback position has really struggled for them over the last, you know, at least decade for sure. And so I think at the end of the day, uh, you know, Toa would be a phenomenal pick for them. Um, you know, but for me, uh, I think, you know, moving forward with the Chargers, man, uh, with them having the sixth pick, um, obviously it's up in the air between these two quarterbacks. But I'm going to if I was uh, taking uh, a guy at the number six pick, it was going to be Justin Herbert with uh, Toa, uh, Toa, Toa Toga Valoa going off the board at number five. I'm just going to take Justin Herbert uh, to the Chargers. You know, they have an opportunity with Tyrod Taylor uh, to really uh move forward with a guy that understands coach Anthony Flynn's system. He understands what he wants. He understands the language. They have a guy that they can plug in there and play and that's mobile um, right away. And it gives a guy like Justin Herbert, a guy that's been um, taking some, some ups and downs throughout this draft process in the last couple of years of college uh, to really sit back and develop. He'll be on the West coast and have an opportunity to learn from crafty veterans and uh, be a part of an experience and young team moving forward. I like the pick. Justin Herbert, he's generating a lot of buzz, and some even think he'll go off the board before Tua. And, you know, yeah, you that's look. The debate you, right now. <laughs> yeah, I know. That, that's what everybody's talking about, man. And Justin Herbert, we know he has the prototypical size. He went out to the Senior Bowl and he thrived there. And so it looks like Anthony Lim is pretty committed to keeping Tyrod Taylor there. And that's why he really hasn't explored going after Cam Newton. But I actually like the pick. I think that's a good fit. What do you think about that, Arthur? No, man, I love that pick, man. And the thing is this, you bring in Justin and you don't have the pressure of him having to start day one. It could be a similar situation to Tyrod Taylor and Baker Mayfield in Cleveland where Tyrod started the first couple of games and then they transitioned to Baker, but it relieved some of that initial pressure that was on Baker. So I look at this situation the exact same, man. They have a running back that they love that they just uh, extended to Austin Eckler. The defense is going to be a lot more healthy this season with Derwin James coming back. So with all those things being said, man, I don't think you really have to feel the pressure of Justin coming in and day one having to have that short, that load on his shoulders. All right, let's go ahead and move on. I'm number seven with the Carolina Panthers. The new regime is here. Matt Rule now as the head coach. And we saw them make a lot of moves this offseason, letting go of Cam Newton. And we saw Luke Keekley retire. And so right now, looking at the board with Derek Brown and Isaiah Simmons still on the board, that is going to be a very difficult conversation for the Panthers' war room. And I am going to select Isaiah Simmons because I think he can come in. You know Thomas Davis has been gone for a couple of years. Keekly gone to retirement. You plug Isaiah Simmons alongside Shaq Thompson, who's another versatile linebacker. And Simmons, we saw him play DB, safety, outside linebacker, edge rusher for Clemson, 6'4", 240 pounds. He's a freak athlete. And I think this is a guy that Matt Rule can build his defense around for many years to come i like that man isaiah simmons is a guy that i personally think could go a lot higher looking at the the giants at four but isaiah man this is a dude like you said man sideline to sideline can rush the passer he checks every box puts me in the mind of a derwin james type of athlete man so i definitely got to pick a lot from carolina yeah i would have to agree with you as well uh just because of the simple fact that um, in a system like Carolina, we don't necessarily know what they're implementing as far as the defense is concerned. You know, having guys coming over from college, they, the scheme will be 
a little bit different than uh, than the pro uh, pro schemes, but also with these college coaches coming into the NFL at this point in time now, they they have been uh, a benefit to the NFL with their innovation and their creativity as far as putting guys uh, with unique skill sets and uh, uh, unique developments um, into situations of what they can where they can thrive. And so Isaiah Simmons, you know, being able to be out in the open field, uh, splitting the difference between you know two and three receivers. Um, as well as coming down in the box and making plays in the run game, he's definitely going to be a great benefit for uh, the uh, Carolina Panthers. All right, man. So for the Arizona Cardinals, man, we know they need help along that offensive line, but you can also say they need help on the edge as well. But for me, man, when you bring in Kyler Murray, that's your franchise quarterback. We know that they love um, King and Drake as well, but at the same time, they have to protect both of those guys. And with that being said, I think Cliff, Kirk, Cliff Kingsbury is going offensive line here. And in terms of which offensive lineman, I have them taking Tristan Wirfs, uh, the tackle out of Iowa, man. This is a guy that's played both right and left tackle, um, very fundamental guy. And I think that, man, when in terms of what they're going to be trying to accomplish with the Cardinals out there in that terms of that offense and how they're bringing the collegiate style to this level, I think this offensive lineman that definitely fits really well into that. Yeah, Tristan Wirfs is another beastly offensive line, man. I love watching his film at Iowa. He is one of those guys that can move around the edge really well, very athletic and versatile along the line. And I know C.D. Lamb is the popular pick amongst the Cardinals fans because they want to see him reunite with Kyler Murray. But I think going Mm -hmm. offensive line is the smart move. So I would agree with that pick, Arthur. Yeah, well, and then also we're talking about the offensive line. They brought in Marcus Gilbert a year ago, and he tore his ACL. They re-signed him on a very, very low-risk, high-reward type deal. They already have DJ Humphreys, who they love. They just extended him. So I think when you look at Tristan in that regard, he either comes in and he's your day-one starter, or he comes in and he's learning and backing up Marcus Gilbert and DJ Humphreys, which still isn't a bad thing to do. So I think either way is going to be a good situation for them out there. I like that pick. I like that pick, man. Arizona's going to have to start making some noise out there in that in that Western Conference, man. The NFC West is a very tough conference, and uh, they're going to, you know, with Kyler Murray and what he was able to do last year, putting up some points, man. I'm so excited for this team moving forward, man. Especially with, uh, you know, DeAndre Hopkins and Larry Fitzgerald. We talk about guys that that rarely drop passes. I mean, uh, Larry Fitzgerald has more I mean, tackles than he does than he <laughs> drop passes, and that's two of the that's best stat, ever. Do yeah, it. that's a stat that's unheard of, and so. Uh, with that pick, man, you definitely solidify uh, a, an opportunity for them to score more points and to give Kyler Murray the protection he needs to move forward. Um, so with the number nine pick, you know, in the Jacksonville Jaguars, I think per, for me personally, I'm going to go with C.J. Henderson. I think with the departure of, uh, you know. I, I like that. The, yeah, Jeez. yeah, man. See, yeah, C.J. <laughs> Henderson out of Florida, man. Um, great cornerback, uh, versatile 6'1", 204. Um, you know, plays uh, very well in man man coverage, uh, plays schemes very well, and he's very agile in and out of his cuts and being able to mirror, you know, key receivers, um, especially going against the type of talent that the SEC is putting out this year as, as far as receiver. Um, he definitely had to, you know, be in challenge uh, week in and week out as far as uh, his counterparts are concerned. And I just think, you know, moving forward, man, with Jalen Ramsey's departure, A.J. Bouye, I think the Jacksonville Jaguars are going to have to solidify uh, their secondary needs and and they're going to have to move forward, uh, especially with the NFC South. And uh, I mean, not the NFC South, but the AFC South and and what um, and what Indianapolis and Tennessee Titans are bringing to the table. So they're going to have to get ready. And C.J. Henderson, he's another one of those prospects that has been skyrocketing up the draft boards. They think he can go top 10. Clearly, Jarrell, you view him as a nice fit with Jacksonville, and he is one of the best cover corners behind Okuda. And so I actually really like that fit in Jacksonville. You know, Ramsey's gone. Boy, you mentioned traded to Denver. And so going to Jacksonville, where Doug Marone has already come out and said, man, we need a hit on all our draft picks. C.J. Henderson staying in Florida, I think that is a nice move right there. No, man, I I love that, man. C.J. Henderson, I think he definitely comes in and fills a huge void for those guys on the defensive side of the ball. And understanding that Marone is a hard-nosed, tough type of coach, man, once hard-nosed, gritty type players, I think C.J. is going to come in there and fit great. 
All right, number 10, the Cleveland Browns on the clock. They are eyeing offense alignment. Taking a look at the board, we got Jedrick Wills and Andrew Thomas available. Of the two, I'm going to have Andrew Thomas out of Georgia. Coming off the board, number 10, the Browns, they want to continue to build on that offensive line. They really have struggled with that area since Joe Thomas hung it up. And Baker Mayfield, Kevin Stefanski, a new head coach in town. They want to make sure that Baker Mayfield has a enough time to make some throws in and outside of the pocket. Andrew Thomas has done it at the biggest stage, the biggest conference, SEC, going up against top-tier talent every single Saturday. Andrew Thomas to Cleveland at 10. Yeah, man, you definitely got to draft Andrew Thomas there, protect those guys in terms of Baker Mayfield. Obviously, um, they have a great running back duo with Kareem Hunt and Nick Chubb, two of the guys that have had a ton of success in this league. But showing up the offensive line, that was the big knock on them all season last year, man. They just didn't protect Baker enough. So I think, man, bringing Andrew Thomas is going to be huge. Yeah, I would have to agree with that. You know, when you look at a guy like Baker Mayfield and the type of success that he had coming out of Oklahoma, um, Heisman Trophy winner, you see guys uh, and what he was able to do with a clear pocket um, and when the protection is uh, when the protection is solid, man, um, as well as his first year coming into the NFL, man, we know when he has opportunities uh, back there with a clear pocket, he's a little bit undersized, but he can put the ball where he needs to. Um, he can have a lot of success. And I think uh, with drafting Andrew Thomas uh, to try to follow behind another Thomas that used to be out there, man, I think he would be a, <laughs> a, a, a phenomenal, a phenomenal addition to their team. Uh, because when you look at the supporting cast, receiver, quarterback, um, running back, uh, their defense is, is steadily coming along. Um, you see, you, you, you see that they have pieces in place to be successful. And so, um, solidifying the O line definitely gives them an opportunity. I like that. Now, for me, man, with the 11th pick, the New York football Jets. Yes, that team. <laughs> man. They're, they're, they're diving into that Oklahoma receiving well, man, that seems to always produce first-round picks, man. And they're drafting C.D. Lamb, man. I think this is a guy that comes in and upgrades that position drastically day one. I think Sam Darnold benefits hugely from the C.D. Lamb pickup, man. Just having an explosive weapon like that, a guy that can score, can run all the routes. I mean, he checks every box, man. So I think that that's going to be a huge asset. And it's going to ultimately make Le'Veon Bell a lot more effective because it's going to – lighten up some of those boxes that he had to face last year as well. I think you just started a run at receiver. Arthur, I think this is uh, ideally what's going to happen because you look at the Jets who, yes, they need a receiver. C.D. Lamb certainly fits the bill. We know they lost Robbie Anderson in free agency. And right there beneath them, the number 12 spot, <laughs> the Las Vegas Raiders, they too have done a lot of homework on wide receivers. Even Mike Mayock coming out in his pre-draft presser saying that they need to address the wide receiver situation. So right here at number 12, I'm going with Jerry Judy, the receiver out of Alabama, another speedster that can come in. Las Vegas as they move into their new stadium. Give Derek Carr slash Marcus Mariota another weapon. We don't know who's actually going to be the starter there because they're very high on Mariota as well. But Jerry Judy is another talented receiver in this year's draft class. And I think he's going to help that Raiders offense move forward and really fill the hole that was left with Amari Cooper going to Dallas. Yeah, I like that pick, man. I like Jerry Judy. Um, I mean, like I said before in the podcast, this SEC and the plethora of receivers in which these guys are producing this year, um, I think is I think is astronomical uh, as far as the talent that's coming out of this conference. Um, you know, from 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 guys at the LSU, Alabama, uh, and, and you know, and then you have guys over like you know like CD Lamb over in Oklahoma that are you know continuously producing. So I'm excited about this run of receivers. Um, with the 13th pick in the 49ers, I think I'm going to have to continue the another run of receiver. I think <laughs> these guys are uh, these guys are looking to 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 add uh, some value at the receiving corps with obviously the departure of Emmanuel Sanders, um, with having uh, Marcus Goodwin uh, up this year, um, as 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 well as you know only having. Uh, Debo Bruce, Samuel, yeah. Debo Samuel. There you go, Debo, Debo. Yeah, yeah. I apologize for that. Yeah, no, but. They're going to have to add some value to him. You know, obviously he's still in his rookie contract. He's a young guy, has a lot of talent. They're going to have to continue to move forward. So with the 13th pick, I'm going to go with Henry Ruggs the third out of Alabama, the speedster. Um, I think at the end of the day, they're going to have to try to have a guy that's similar to Marquise Goodwin type of speed, 
Um, a guy that really can take the top off a, a defense because, you know, as we know, this team loves to ground and pound and they're very successful off their play action pass with Garoppolo um, and Kittle and those guys being able to get in behind the linebackers um, and play action pass. So I think at the end of the day, I'm going to go with Henry Ruggs, the third um, out of Alabama for uh, a receiver going to uh, San Fran. What did I tell you, Arthur, the receivers? Once you, <laughs> once you hit up with C.D. Lamb, I knew what was about to happen. But now we're at number 14, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, which is another team that is rumored to be eyeing a potential move up into the top 10. They they are rumored to move up, but in this particular simulation, they're not moving up, and we know they need offensive line help, man. So with that being the case, I'm looking at Jaderic Wills, man, out of Alabama. You bring in a guy like Tom Brady, you know the type of success that he's had in this league. His resume speaks for itself. But you have to protect him. You cannot allow him to take too many shots, especially at the age that he is. So with that being said, man, you bring in an offensive lineman man that has been a part of a winning program that understands what it's like to play championship football because that's what Brady brings. So when you bring in a guy like Jaderic Wills, that's going to ultimately have him fall right in line, man, and help shore up that Buccaneers situation down there. Now we're at number 15, the Denver Broncos, and I hear that they are interested in wide receivers as well. They want to surround Drew Locke with as many offensive weapons as possible. We know they had Cortland Sutton. We had a big breakout season last year. And one name that they have done some work on is Justin Jefferson, the wide receiver out of LSU. And I'm going to take him right here, 6'1", 202 pounds. I know some think this could be a little bit too early for Jefferson, which is why Denver could maybe trade back a couple of spots and still land him. But Justin Jefferson, his resume speaks for itself. Over 1,500 yards receiving, 111 receptions, which tied for number one in the FBS this past year. 18 receiving touchdowns. I think you add Jefferson to an offense that already has Cortland Sutton, Noah Fant at tight end, and then Philip Lindsay and Melvin Gordon, who they added in free agency. This offense, all of a sudden in Denver, is starting to look scary. So when I when I'm looking at my draft, I, I see a guy with a very high draft grade uh, that's been sitting here. Um, he's not necessarily the guy in which uh, we have been talking about. Um, but I think for the Atlanta Falcons, man, um, they got to they they have to solidify uh, not only a few positions in the secondary um, linebacker wise, uh, but on the interior, man. And so mm -hmm. I'm going to take I'm, 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 yeah, I'm going to take a guy like Derek Brown, who's been sitting six, five, three hundred and um, twenty six pounds. Um, you know, he can play a variety of positions. I think, you know, obviously at the next level, he's going to be more of an interior two gapping type of guy. Uh, plug, you know, plug in holes. But at the same time, man, he's got some power, quickness, um, explosiveness off the ball, uh, uses his hands well. And so I think at the end of the day, the, the, the Atlanta Falcons have to get more aggressive and meaner up front. Um, I think, you know, when you look at the Atlanta Falcons, we always know them for their speed. We know them for the, for the you know, the guys scoring a lot of points. Um, and we used to know them for having a very fast and active defense when they went to the Super Bowl. And so they're going to have to, you know, solidify this with some more physicality up front. And I think Derrick Brown gets it done. So then with the Cowboys, man, I was actually torn between two players, man. Xavier McKinney out of Alabama. And, I, and let me make sure I say his name right. K. Levon. Yeah. Hey, LeVon Ch uh, Chasen. Yeah. So those are the two guys that I was thinking about strongly for the Cowboys because on the offensive side of the ball, they've taken care of making sure that Dak is going to be there next year in terms of the franchise tag him. They already have Amari Cooper taken care of, and they have Ezekiel Elliott. On the defensive side of the ball, you can never have enough talented players. I understand they just signed Alden Smith to a super low-risk, high-reward type deal, but you don't know what you're going to get in Alden just because of the amount of time that he's missed. So with that being the case, man, I'm picking uh, Calevon Chasen out of LSU pass rusher, man. This guy can get after the quarterback, very active, fluid hips, great hand movement, all the things that you want in terms of checking the box. He does that, man. And the fact that he was on LSU's team – you got to think, man, he played in that spotlight week in and week out last year. He played on the biggest stage versus some of the most talented players in the SEC and was able to do his thing, man. So that's why the Dallas Cowboys I selected him. Arthur, I'm proud, man. I'm proud. I like the pick. <laughs> I, I like the pick. Kelevon Chason, man. Hey, you know what? 
He is a, a really good player watching him at LSU. Not only can he disrupt the passer, but he can also drop back in coverage. And with Mike Nolan coming into Dallas, and he said he's going to run kind of that versatile 3-4, 4-3 front. And so they've been lacking another edge rusher. We know they got Alden Smith. You talked about that already, Arthur. And, you know, Randy Gregory is another guy who's in the reinstatement process. We don't know what's going to happen with him. But Chase on is a guy that has definitely been linked to the Dallas Cowboys. I think he can come in and join a D-line that now has Gerald McCoy, Don Terry Poe, Demarcus Lawrence, and I think he can make some noise with that Dallas defense that is now really focused on generating turnovers under Mike Nolan that's in his DNA. So I approve of the pick, Arthur, 100%. Um, I got the Dolphins. We live. You know, so we got our, we got, you know, at the beginning of the, the beginning of the round, we went with a guy named Toa Tugavaloa. So we have our quarterback situation figured out. Now we have a half the guy that's going to protect him moving forward for the next 10 years. So I'm going to go with Joshua Jones, uh, mm, tackle mm. out of Houston, 6'5", 320, uh, very agile, uh, uh, extremely big, um, and having an opportunity to really protect uh, you know, either either side of, of, of uh, you know, whether it's the left tackle or the right tackle of Tua Togovailoa, we understand that um, you're going to have to build an offensive line, you know, around him, very successful offensive line, um, you know, whether that's free agency or through the draft. Um, because when you make an investment into a guy, a quarterback of the future, especially a guy that's had, you know, a lot of injuries uh, playing in high, in, in high school as well as in college, I think at the end of the day, moving forward, you have to have a guy that's going to, you know, give him that sense of comfort give him that sense of security. And I think Joshua Jones um, coming in at 18 gives uh, adds some value to the Miami Dolphins. Yeah, that's an <laughs> offensive tackle that's actually uh, drawn a lot of interest, a lot of Zoom meetings for him. You know, So Joshua Jones makes some sense there. Dolphins, maybe not the most popular pick, but I think that's one that fits for sure. Finally, my draft ban is lifted as I'm now back on the clock at number 19 after Jarrell and Arthur put me in prison here after uh, skipping a couple of picks earlier. Uh, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm back, baby. I'm back, and I'm ready to roll with the Las Vegas Raiders. We already addressed the wide receiver position with Jerry Judy earlier in the round. Now they need to solidify their defense, and there is a beast that is still on the board. He comes from the SEC, Javon Kinlaw, 6'5", 324 pounds out of South Carolina. You know, John Gruden loves big defense alignment that can come in and can generate havoc on opposing offenses. I know corner is a need as well, but I just think Javon Kinlaw, this guy has a unique story. It's really, really inspirational. Came from a very poor family and grew up and continued to work and strive and achieve his goals. And if you watch this guy and his tape, you're going to fall in love with what he can do because he has position flex as well. So Javon Kinlaw, to the Raiders at number 19. I like that pick a lot, man. Javon can definitely ball. He's going to be a huge asset to that Raiders defense, man. Yeah, no, I mean, I think, you know, obviously John Gruden, if they, you know, they were able to to, to do some things last year with Max Crosby and, and the type of season he was able to come out with out the gate. And, and so uh, we know that these guys like to get upfield. Uh, we know that they like to put a lot of pressure on the quarterback. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, we they only have one guy out there that's been causing a lot of havoc. And so being able to add a lot of value, a guy that's 6'5", 324 pounds, um, I definitely think that uh, Ken Law can come in and add some value uh, right away to this uh, Raiders uh, front four. I like it, man. So now I am back on the clock, man. For the Jacksonville Jaguars, we've already addressed uh, some needs on the opposite side of the ball early on. I believe it was uh, – oh, actually, um, the cornerback, C.J. Henderson, excuse me. So the cornerback situation is solidified. But now you got to uh, address the interior defense alignment. Now I wanted to go Javon Ken Law, but – Obviously, the Raiders selected him. Snatched so, with that him. being the case, snatched him right before I can get a one pick ahead of me. So, with that <laughs> being the case, man, I'm going to go to the Big 12 to TCU, where they have another mammoth defensive interior line who can rush the passing, which is what we all love. And Ross Blacklock, that's going to be the pick for the Jacksonville Jaguars at 20. Okay. Ah, I got gotcha, you, nice. man. Yeah, that guy is under the radar, but he can play too. And I think he can go into Jacksonville and uh, help that defense because, you know, Calais Campbell's gone now. Mm-hmm. Traded to the Baltimore Ravens, man. So they definitely got to replace that type of productivity. And he's a guy, man, that you're going to have in the contract for four years. Young guy that you can get to buy into that system. I know 
with some of the older guys in that regime, man, in terms of the Jalen Ramseys, the A.J. Bouillets, they kind of fell out of it with uh, with um, Doug Marone. So when you look at a guy like Ross, who's going to be young coming in here, that's the guy that you're able to imprint on and get him to buy into that system without having any other outside influences on him. Philly, 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 what it do? Nah, man, so I'm on the clock. Uh, we know Philadelphia has added some cornerback play uh, with Darius Slay this offseason. Uh, we saw them uh, earlier in the draft. Uh, we had them taking earlier. Oh, no, actually, they haven't had a pick earlier in the draft. I apologize. So coming in at 21, we know they need receiver help as well as offensive line help. Um, Don't but start a riot. Don't start they, a riot. You, you know what they need. <laughs> man, they, de- they, def- they definitely need receivers, man. So, um, so, so for me personally, I'm going to go with T. Higgins, uh, 6'4", receiver out of uh, Clemson. I think he mirrors uh, a little bit of similarities to Alshon Jeffries, but a little bit more athletic and agile. Um, he caught, you know, 20% of his passes last year were touchdowns. Um, he's got a tall frame, uh, 215 pounds, a lot of muscle to go along with the frame. Um, and just giving them opportunities to high point a lot of the balls. And I think at the end of the day, uh, being in that RPO type of system in which uh, Doug Peterson um, runs in Philadelphia, I think he will be a phenomenal asset uh, coming in because, you know, Clemson's style of running plays is similar to what uh, Philadelphia is running as well. So I think he would have a great benefit in that system. Love that pick, man. Got to bring a receiver in there to help all Carson wins. T. Higgins definitely does that. And as uh, Arthur said, you avoided a ride in Philly. You went with a receiver. So I think you're <laughs> hey, good, man. Joe. Listen, uh, you saw what they did to Santa Claus, man. I would hate for them to do that to you. That's all I'm saying, man. <laughs> man, they be ready. They be ready. Hey, look, they're so, so ready to... I'm man, you, so ready in Philly, man. They, you you got to tell them to work with you. Right. <laughs> All right, man. Number 22, the Minnesota Vikings, okay? They traded away Stephon Diggs. I know receiver is a need, but this draft class is so rich with wide receivers. They can get one second, third round or so. This is an intriguing pick because it does have a connection to Stephon Diggs. How about they select his brother, Trevon Diggs, cornerback Ooh. out of Alabama at number 22. They need corner help. They cut Xavier Rhodes, by the way. They lost Mackenzie Alexander in free agency. Trey Waynes went to Cincinnati. They are very, very thin in the secondary. Trevon Diggs, you can mark him up from Alabama. 6'1", long arms, physical, can play press man as well. And Mike Zimmer is going to love him. And they get another Diggs in Minnesota. So Trevon Diggs, I think, goes to the Vikings at 22. Yeah, man, that dude can flat out ball, man. He's definitely a, a great asset to bring into that team as well, man, in terms of him having a former brother that used to play there. So he's not going to have the big adjustment in terms of getting used to the city and getting used to knowing just the ins and outs where to live and things like that, man. So I think that's a nice pickup. Yeah, they definitely need cornerback play. Um, the Minnesota Vikings run a you know a very familiar scheme in which everybody knows. Um, and the corners have to be able to hold their ends up. Uh, hold themselves up on that island and so at the end of the day they they definitely need to be able to improve on the outside so the 23rd pick the new england patriots now they need help at quarterback receiver edge line i mean whatever you want to go they, they need a lot of help right now man but when i'm looking at this team i have them taking a chance on a quarterback because we've seen in the past where they took a chance on a quarterback out of michigan didn't really have a lot of the hype around him a lot of question marks with this guy, man, out of Utah State, Jordan Love. He comes in as a guy who can do a lot of things really good, but then at the same time, he gets really reckless. It reminds me a little bit of Patrick Mahomes in terms of the throws that he could make and just that overall gutsiness. But I do think, man, you putting him with Bill Belichick, that gets him to understand the ring, uh, to, to rail, rail him in just a little bit and help him understand what throws he should be making, when he should take those chances and get him in a system that's going to really give him the the type of structure that he needs to be successful. Yeah, man, that's that's a good pick. And I think New England is the real wild card right here in the first round. A lot of people think they could even make a move up to land a signal caller. So right here at 23, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, man, you have to think, man, do you feel that Bill Belichick is comfortable with Jared Steedham as this quarterback going into next season, I personally don't think that, especially with the lack of OTAs that are going on right now. So when you factor in all those things, you have to say to yourself, man, if there's a quarterback that's on the board that he feels can come in and be the day one starter, he's going to make that move. You know, when you're looking at that in New England, 
Like I'm, just, I'd rather take my chances with a guy. You know, if I'm a, if I'm gonna throw a guy out there essentially for the first time, and he's gonna be a guy, you know, trying to learn the ropes, I'd rather it be a guy that's that's a rookie that has a large upside that I know is gonna take these experiences and be able to turn these things into championships or possibly turn make his way into a franchise quarterback. I think, you know, at the end of the day, Jordan Love presents a lot of upside. He's six four. He's tall. Um, he presents the type of frame in which Bel- Belichick has been used to working with, um, as well as he's athletic enough to be able to to to, uh, you know, implement himself into the short passing game, as well as the runs off tackle. Because we know, you know, at the end of the day, Josh McDaniels is very capable of, of implementing those types of runs when we've seen Jacoby Brissett. Uh, under the under center for the New England Patriots. So uh, it'll be an exciting and intriguing pick for Jordan Love to be in New England. Let me see. So with the Saints, man, uh, there's a lot of – they have a lot of continuity uh, with their team already. Um, offensive line it definitely needs to be addressed. But, you know, the, the resigning of Pete uh, and, 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 and as well as, uh, you know, still having guys like Armstead uh, out there at left tackle, they, they have an opportunity to still – move forward and, and, and really rebuild for the offensive line later on in the year. Um, so for me, I'm going to go to the defensive side of the ball. Um, I'm going to go to the linebacker position for Patrick Queen, uh, LSU, uh, being able to play there in uh, in New Orleans uh, and, and, and play for a state in which they, he's already familiar with and already loves him. I think Patrick Queen going to uh, the New Orleans Saints for number 24 would be a good pick at the linebacker position. I like that, man. Anytime you pick a linebacker, you got my vote. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and and I'm sure that'd be a popular pick because Patrick Queen stays there in Louisiana, gets to go play for the Saints, and he is another rangy, versatile linebacker. That guy's fun to play. He lit up the national championship game, won the defensive MVP against Clemson. But now we're looking at the Minnesota Vikings again at number 25. And I know, again, I talked about the receivers, but – Right now, I almost feel like in round one, they have to address the defensive end position because we know Everson Griffin is still a free agent. doesn't look like they're going to continue that long-standing relationship. They did lose uh, Stephen Weathers in free agency to Carolina. And one guy that looks awfully intriguing right now is Yeter Gross Matos out of Penn State. Going to Minnesota at 25, 6'5", 266 pounds. He can go in and rush off the edge. And how about a duo of Gross Matos and Danielle Hunter for the Minnesota Vikings in that defense? That's going to be a daunting duo to block for the entire NFL and the NFC North. Oh, without a doubt, man. That dude, Yeter, man, he's highly successful, very productive guy. I think he fits exactly what the Minnesota Vikings are going to be trying to do. And you already hit on it with the uncertainty of if Everson Griffin will return or not. This is a guy that you know you're going to have for the next four years guaranteed, and he's going to be a staple on that defense. Yeah, I think. I mean, we'll, we'll see, man. I, you know, at the end of the day, uh, it's going to be, you know, very exciting to see what Minnesota does moving forward. Uh, I mean, they have to get it together because obviously, you know, Aaron Rodgers, is in that division, the Chicago Bears, um, and, and what having Nick Foles in that division, um, the division is it only has an opportunity to get better. And we know with the Detroit Lions, these guys are going to be coming in with a quarterback of the future as well. Um, and so they're going to be will- looking to put up points as well. So Minnesota has to get better defensively um, in order to be able to compete. I like it. Now, the 26th pick is back on me. Dolphins. The Miami Dolphins, baby. We back in the building. Now, People got on us all last year about us trading away our talented players for draft picks. But now we didn't got our quarterback. We've got our offensive lineman. And remember, we traded away Mika Fitzpatrick, generational talent, straight bowling. Well, now one of those picks comes to help us right here, baby. And we'll be drafting a safety out of the University of Alabama, Xavier McKinney. Ooh. This is a guy, man. And this is a guy that's going to come right back for me, man. The last safety I drafted out of Alabama worked out phenomenal. So I'm going back to that well, man. I think Xavier McKinney comes in, and you're pairing him up with Xavier Howard and Byron Jones. I mean, dude, I mean, excuse me, Brian, Brian, uh, yeah, Brian Jones, both of those corners. And then you have Xavier Roman, just the, the D third, man. I think that that's going to be a phenomenal mix. And I think that they changed the face of that program, that Miami Dolphins team, and get them back into that competition with AFC, uh, AFC East, especially now that Brady is out of there. 
That is a nice looking secondary. They land McKinney, as you mentioned, Byron Jones, Xavier Howard, and then they really added Kyle Van Noy. They added Shaq Lawson. That defense is looking good with Brian Flores. Absolutely, man. Yeah, they're definitely adding some guys up, up front that is going to be able to rush the passer correctly. Uh, Brian Flores has uh, taken um, notice to what um, you know teams like New England are able to do. When you have guys in which you can draft and develop and uh, you know make staples in your organization, uh, that says a lot about your organization. So I think you know with them trying to get younger, they try to have you know they have a lot of picks in this draft. They have opportunity to really, you know, solidify themselves and pick guys in which are going to become staples for their team moving forward. And uh, Xavier McKinney coming from that Alabama type of scheme, uh, toughness, um, the SEC overall, um, I think he'll be poised to come in and make an impact right away. Um, at 27 for Seattle, I'm going to go defensive line. I'm going to go with the Big Ten. Uh, I'm going to go with A.J. Epinensa? Pen- Pen- yeah, that yeah, sounds that, right. That sounds there right. Evidence, Evidence. Yeah. Okay, there we go. There we go. I apologize, AJ, if you are listening and hearing, uh, you know, but I'm a Big Ten guy. I know a lot of these guys, um, and I'm excited about the products in which are coming out this year. Um, AJ coming out of Iowa knows how to play the run. Uh, really, he's very well and versatile. And um, I think the Seattle Seahawks are, look, are looking to continue uh, to add uh, some value to their defensive line. Um, you know, last year with Jadavian Clowney, uh, Ziggy Ansah was in and out the lineup with injuries. They need to they need to have another big body guy over there, one one that can rush the passer um, from the defensive end position, but it's one that can c- come in and play the three technique if needed. And I think AJ is a good uh, a gu- good guy for this opportunity. All right, number twenty eight, the Baltimore Ravens. This is just a perfect match here, and I've seen a mock to this team very frequently. Kenneth Murray to the Ravens at number twenty eight. The linebacker out of Oklahoma, you know, Baltimore, they've really been looking to fill C.J. Mosley's void since he signed with the Jets in free agency a couple of years ago. Kenneth Murray, he can come in and just add more value to an already stacked Baltimore defense that's anchored in the secondary by Earl Thomas. And then that front defensive line that looks scary with Brandon Williams, Calais Campbell is now there. And of course, Matt Judon, the franchise outside linebacker. So Kenneth Murray here at 28. I think he's going to make this Ravens defense much better and take him to another level. Absolutely, man. You can never have enough quality defensive players. And Kenneth is a guy that's going to come in and definitely, definitely be a huge asset to that team. Man, so the 29th pick, man, I have the Tennessee Titans. They're they're continuing to have that culture change, man, in terms of being a hard-nosed, just rough and tough type of team, man. You already know the type of game they play on offense with Derrick Henry. So on the defensive side of the ball, I have them adding a a very productive, very physical interior defensive lineman in Marlon Davidson out of Auburn, man. This is a guy who had the chance to leave early, man, but he decided to stay. He decided to come back, and you saw the productivity that he had associated with it, man. So for me, man, I'm extremely excited for Marlon. I think he's going to come in and fit that hard-nosed toughness, that physicality that the Titans are trying to do in their division. Marlon Davison was very productive at Auburn, and he's one of those guys, another one that's flown under the radar. So I like that pickup from Mike Vrabel in that stout Tennessee front. Yeah, man, especially they're going to have to do some things up front to continue to, to, to boast uh, a lot of results, man. That team last year showed a lot of great strides defensively, and so uh, Marlon Davison can only add, uh, add value to a team that's already doing well. And when and, you're looking at the Titans division too, man, that, that division is up in the air. I mean, when we talk about the Texans, who knows what they're going to look like, some of the moves they've been making. The Colts, they're still kind of in a transitional phase in terms of is Phillip Rivers going to be the Phillip Rivers of old or is it going to look like how he looked last year where he just looked old? So all of those things, man, are kind of up in the air. So I think the Titans are definitely trying to take a stronghold with this move. I am on the clock, so work Uh-oh. with me. Work with me. Dun, dun, dun. No, I'm just joking. Uh, so, <laughs> well, with the Green Bay Packers, man, I mean, they had a phenomenal season last year. Um, a lot of them, a lot of the games weren't necessarily pretty. Uh, everybody was talking about how, how you know, they their their record was kind of deceptible, and obviously it showed in the playoffs, running into San Francisco, but they were just juggernauts at the moment in time. Uh, but at this, uh, but so I think you know the Packers moving forward, they have the right philosophy in place. They have everything in, in which they need, but they have to get better at a few positions. Tight end being number one, um, adding another receiver to help out uh, Devontae Adams on the outside, as well as continuing to improve their interior, man. They had a lot of injuries on the offensive line last year. So I think for me personally, 
I'm going to go with the tight end position. I'm going to go with Cole. I think it's Met. Cole Met. Cole Komet. Cole Komet. Yeah. Yeah. yeah mm-hmm. Cole Komet. There we go. So I'm going to go with Cole Komet out of Notre Dame. 6'6", 262-pound uh, tight end. Um, versatile. Be able, he's able to block as well as run. I mean, I mean as well as uh, pass catch. And we all know that, you know, Aaron Rodgers loves his tight ends. We know that at the end of the day, when they when their office is clicking it on all cylinders, they have a big guy running vertical down the middle, um, being able to take the safeties off the top of, of their receivers as well, um, i.e. Jermichael Finley, um, J- Jimmy Graham at some point in time. And so I think moving forward, we got uh, the, the, the uh, Green Bay Packers have to, to get better at the tight end position in order to help, uh, really help uh, this offense uh, strive and, um, for the goals in which they, they're trying to reach. I like that. I like that pick a lot. And Komet comes in and can form a duo with Jay Sternberger, who they took last year from A&M, and we know they cut Jimmy Graham. So Cole Komet makes sense for the Packers. Now 31 as we round out the first mock draft with both Arthur and Jarrell. Now I got the Niners. I'm excited because we know they need a wide receiver, and there's one guy that makes the Niners fans very happy with what he can come and bring to the table with his skill set. It's LaVishka Chenault Jr., out of Colorado, 6'1", 227 pounds. And I was really debating Jalen Rager from TCU and even KJ Hamler looks intriguing. But I think San Francisco would really benefit from getting a bigger receiver like Chenault that can complement Debo Samuel. Chenault can be a factor in the red zone. He also has game-changing speed. And so Kyle Shanahan will get to work with another dynamic offensive weapon. I like that pick, man. You can never have enough of those talented wide receivers out there. And when you talk about Kyle Shanahan, man, you know he's a guy that likes to scheme up some things, man, and put up points. So that's definitely going to be, you know, a huge asset in terms of LaVishka coming in there like that. But now, (laughs) the final pick in the first round, the Super Bowl champion Kansas City Chiefs. If you've been to the stadium, you know when they say, in the home of the (laughs) <laughs> so with that being said, man, and those guys be on the clock, I know cornerback is a big need. I know you can never have enough quality offensive linemen. Oh, uh oh, flash on, picking baby. coming, baby. Come on, baby. Let my man Mahomes get another offensive toy, another weapon. He used to have Kareem Hunt, but Don't Kareem do Hunt, it. you know, he had to go. So I know people going to look at me like I'm crazy. I know they say running backs don't have value, but they ain't going to get me DeAndre. Oh, Hunt, my gosh. He went with it. Baby, let's go. That's what I'm going with, man, to end on this first round. Tom Pack, man, the dude can play all three downs. He can block. He checks every box you need. DeAndre Swift, playing him with Patrick Mahomes. Come on, baby. It's, it's, it's not even going to be fair out there, man. That offense is already crazy. Give me that, man. That 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 DeAndre Swift pickup, man, makes them that much more scary. And Andy Reid is loving it. I knew it. I knew it. You were going to go with DeAndre <laughs> Swift, man. And in the first round with a bang. I even thought about taking Swift at 31, even though he made no sense <laughs> for the Niners. <laughs> He just fits, man. He, he's a guy that when I look at what he was able to do at Georgia, the Chiefs offensive line is good already. Now, granted, they can upgrade it. Of course you can, but they already have so much talent around them, man, that it's hard to pass up on a guy like DeAndre Swift, who you know can come and have an immediate impact. DeAndre Swift is definitely the guy. Um, it look electric, explosive. Um, we know what they, you know, Andy Reid likes to do with his running backs, especially coming out the backfield and being able to catch it in the passing game. Um, you know, and so I think at the end of the day, that's an excellent pick. And I'm excited, man, to see what the Kansas City Chiefs do with this draft moving forward, because we all know that uh, you can't just come back and uh, try to repeat just as is, man. You got to have just a little bit of a wrinkle. Yes, indeed, Uh, man. Yes, indeed. And that was a good pick right there by Arthur to close out our mock draft first round edition. Arthur Mota again, NFL vet. And we got Jarrell Worthy. Boys, I appreciate y'all's time coming out, chatting up some football. We are one week away from the NFL draft, April 23rd through the 25th, a fully virtual draft. So they're essentially going to be doing what we've been doing the last hour. Man, we trendsetting, man. They copying us, man. Yeah, man. (laughs) Yeah, man, it's been fun. I really appreciate y'all again, man. It was a blast going through this mock draft, although, you know, y'all dogged me a little bit for jumping out of turn. 
But uh, in the end, Arthur, you made the right pick at 17, so I, I like it. But at the end of the day, bro, I hope you all have a good rest of the afternoon, man. Likewise, man. Stay safe. All right, y'all too. All right, man. Take care.